Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey fly tying video production. Here I'm going to be sharing my favourite flies and methods of tying them to make catching fish better for you guys around the world, making tying these flies easier with different styles and techniques. All the flies I'm going to tie I personally use. I use them to catch fish on the angler and at the end of each of the videos I have a wee list of materials required to tie the fly just in case you missed it during the video and also a link to my online shop where you can purchase the flies and purchase the materials to required to tie these flies if you so wish. I hope you enjoy the video and you'll pass the word about to all your fishing mates. Uh, get them to come and have a look if they want to stay, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if they don't want to stay then they don't have to stay. So today I'm going to be tying a muddler. It's one of my favourite flies to be honest for, for wild brown trout. I love using it on Loch Bar which is a wild water up in Scotland near Fort, uh, near Glencoe. So what I've got in the vise is a fully mill. It's a heavyweight champ barbless. Put a black nickel one in because you can see it a bit better with the videos but you know, it doesn't really matter if it's a black nickel or a bronze. Some people prefer black. I personally prefer bronze most of the time. This is a size 10. Now, we're going to be spinning deer here. Now, a lot of people think they've got to have really, really strong thread for that. This is a 14.0. It's the same thread I use in most of my videos. I just can't see past it. It's sheer, 14.0 and black. Fantastic thread and it is pretty strong for its diameter. We need that. We're going to need some Coq de Leon, which you've seen in the other videos. We're going to use that for the tail. You could use partridge, you could use grouse, you could use anything you want really. We're going to need some of this for the rib. Gold and silver mylar. Right, now that's size 14. That's sort of medium. Perfect for ribbing the fly. What we're also going to need is, you can see the gold going through that. That's just hairs here. Now, I used to try selling this, but it was costing too much for me to make it and sell it. It just wasn't worth the effort. So what I suggest is, if you want to make this dubbing, and I tie quite a lot of flies with this, because the, the, the gold tends to make the hairs here go like olive. What I would suggest is, buy a hairs mask. I have some in stock. Shave it, you know, into a bowl. Buy a packet of gold angel hair, which I also have in stock, and just mix the two of them, either in a blender, a coffee grinder, or, you know, just mix them by hand. Just depends how much material you need, but honestly, Lure Flash used to sell it, it was called Flash Bright, but it was a hair's ear and gold mix and it was fantastic and then they stopped selling it and obviously Lure Flash are no longer in business. Uh, but it really is fantastic material, so get yourself a packet of that made. You know, Gold Angel hair, doesn't matter what make it is, whether it's Hens or Cybia, just get a packet of Gold Angel hair, mix it with, with, with hair's ear, get a mask. You know, it's, it's hair's mask, you can do it in different colours, but I like quite... You know, the, the, the lighter buff colour. So we're going to need that for the body. We're going to need some of my gold marble flash, which is gold and black spot. It's like gold with black spots on it, and it's got a supporting strand through it, so it's a lot stronger. That's going to be our ring. And then, obviously, we need some deer hair. So we're just going to use normal raw deer hair, natural. And that's going to be the head. So let's get started. So tie a thread in. Run the thread down. I'll just get that done. So there we go. Then what we want to do is get some Coq de Leon, as I said. I mean that's a bit excessive to be honest. It's just because I've got quite a lot of it. Uh, you don't really need Coq de Leon, but it is stronger than, than say partridge or a grouse. But you could use just hackle fibre tips, like red game or something, or a brown. Just tie that in. Catch it. Now when I'm fishing this fly on lock bar, I've usually got it on a top dropper. So my, my cast would be that on a top dropper, and I grease it up, so I pull it through the waves. Even if it's flat cam, I still grease it up. Uh, and I'll fish with an Alexandria on a point and a bibio in the middle. Now we've got the... It's gold on one side, silver on the other side, so we want to tie it with the gold. So we want the gold facing away from us. It's a gold gold rib on this fly. So tie that in, and then run your thread back down. Once you're back down there, you want to grab a wee bit of wax. 
and wax the thread up a wee bit more. Right, it doesn't really need wax to be honest because once you put the synthetic gold angel hair through through the, the, the hairs here, it kind of helps bind it to the thread. Right, so just get a piece of that and dub it on. I says you really need, you should have a packet of this in your kit. It really is fantastic. Tie it in. So that's us got it on my rope. We're just going to wind it forward, catch it in. As always, always working it using the other finger. You can see it looks almost gold all the time, even though it's a, from the camera angle, it's not really. There is gold through it, but there's not that much gold, but it almost looks all, all of the gold. So, well, then one, two, three turns of gold flat. We don't need any more than that, and I've, I've stopped it quite far back, because remember we've got a muddler head and a wing to put on. So don't be tempted to go dead far forward with the body. So get the gold marble flash. Because I'm only tying one fly here, normally I take the, the actual hang off it to the size that I want it. But because I'm only tying one fly I don't want any waste, so I'm just going to fold it. Right, and then cut it again. And this time, I'm going to wrap it round the thread, right? So I've got it folded round the thread there. And I'm just going to wind it up and catch it in. Right, so the wing's sitting quite quite mad just now. So what we want to do is push it forward a wee bit, right? Push it forward and just try and get a, a pinching loop over the top of it. Once you get that, you can then knuckle it down and, and, and tie it in. So that's it, I've caught it now, so I'm tying it in. Don't want to tie it in too much because I still want the wing to go back the way. So let's trim the wing. And I always take the scissors at an angle and trim it that way. So that's how it's got our gold wing in. Right, looks fantastic. Any wee excess bits, just trim them off. Right, got a wee bit there. And you'll see we've got a wee hump. There. I'm not going to tie the deer hair in that wee bit. I'm going to go forward. So I'm going to do a wee bit of finish here. Because that, that fly is basically almost done. Apart from the muddler head. So take it forward above the wee lump. Right. And get your deer hair. Now it's up to you if you want to do a little bit. Or do a bigger bit. Some people do two spins. Some people do one big spin. I'm going to do more like one big spin. But not too big. If that makes sense. So that's about how much deer hair I want. And I'm just working it and taking the, the excess bits that are in the way out. So I'm wanting it so that the guard hairs are going to be where I want them to be. So catch it again. One, two, and then let go and just keep turning and it spins. See that? Two turns, nice and slack, then start pulling tight gradually and then spin and keep keep winding then all we want to do is basically push that all back right just keep working it and then once you've got it back you can get the thread in the front of it that's all it needs it doesn't need anything else I don't need another layer of deer hair so I've got to get my varnish ready because I'm going to varnish the thread while I'm doing my work finish as I normally do right so pull that all back you can get tools to keep all that out of the way, but I don't bother. I just use God gave me fingers to to use, so I use my fingers to be quite honest. One, two, three, four, five. On this one, bit of varnish in there. Right, so we've got a bit of varnish on a thread. We're bringing it in. You'll see the varnish coming in a wee blob. Right, then just pull it in tight. Then cut the thread. Right, so that's the fly finished almost. We've just got the messy bit now. Now, I was speaking to a guy the other day there, and he was looking for a pair of curved scissors. And I said, Why do you want curved scissors? Oh, it's to, to do the deer hair. You don't need curved scissors. Once again, all you need to do is go that way. So, I tend to take it out of the vise when I'm trimming. So, trim a little at a time. Because obviously, if you go in too tight, and, and try to chop it all in one go. You can't really go back and add a bit, right? So, 
and I'm trimming it at an angle so I'm holding the scissors with both hands and I'm trimming it at an angle it steadies the scissors I'm using my thumb to hold on to the scissors right and just keep trimming away a wee bit at a time and I'm not using 50 pound scissors or whatever they're like 12 quid they're Fenrir's ones they are really good for the money and what you need to remember is I've tied an awful lot more flies than most people these ones are at the end of their days uh, they're starting to not be as good as what they were but you know I've had three years out of them so I'm doing not bad right so I'll just keep trimming away until we get it finished and that says you can go tighter if you want now down the other side of the fly and a lot you've got to depend decide how much of the collar you want to leave as well because sometimes you don't want too thick a collar because then you can't see the wing through the fly so I'm now almost at the nitty gritty which is the end see that's a bit, wee bit too much for me up there so I'm just going to trim that just keep going that's where it ha it's handy that you can turn your vise to be quite honest Mice doesn't turn on a, a level axis, it just spins, but that's all I need. I don't need it to spin levelly. Levelly, what kind of word's that? <laughs> right. Obviously, as I say, if I want to make it more compact, I can. And if you've got any stray bits, just take the points of scissors in and clean it off. Right. And there you go. Pretty simple. We lock bar. I use it on lock bar a lot. I think it's a great fly. It might not be the, the tidy smuggler head or whatever, but you, honestly, the fish don't really care. I mean, I can trim it a wee bit more but the fish don't really care it does what it's supposed to do and I used it a long time ago in an article that I'd done with Tim Smith on a Today's Fly Fisher and I caught a lot of fish on it that day and it was a really windy day and the fish were going ballistic jumping out the water trying to grab it so obviously you can make a silver version as well but I like the black and gold alright so I hope you really enjoyed that hope you're going to tell your mates to have a wee look like I say, they can come, have a look, stay if they want, subscribe if they want. Remember to hit the like button, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, follow me on Facebook, David C. Downey. You can follow me on my Instagram, uh, Dave Downey Fly Fishing. Or you can get me on my website, my online shops, www.fly-fishingworld.com So take care guys. Remember, caring is sharing and tight lines. Mm -hmm.